Welcome to my channel, Sunshine Shoulders. Sunshine Shoulders is a channel geared toward the new man and woman who's never been to the Philippines, but who's contemplating a visit here for a slow vacation or to rejuvenate. My 11 years here doesn't make me an expert, but it does give me a unique perspective. I like to share that with the new man and woman, or anyone really, if it's going to make your trip here more enjoyable and by all means safer. I'm boots on the ground here. I'm in the center of all of this, and it's for your benefit. Not on the edges of like a lot of these other vloggers that you see talking about the Philippines. I live among the locals. I'm always going to give you the nitty gritty. That's exactly what I'm seeing, what I'm living, and what I'm experiencing. I'm not going to sugarcoat that. It's not going to start today. Please enjoy my video as I discuss dealing with the Filipinas family when you come to visit in the Philippines. Thank you again. Please enjoy my video. Welcome back to my channel, Sunshine Shoulders. I just got back. I picked up a few dollars from the M lawyer that I had sent myself. And that's one thing that you will have to learn how to do from time to time. Uh, find out how you're going to do that. Uh, how you're going to remit that money to yourself. You know, I can, I can open up a, a savings account here, but I just don't have the confidence. When I first got over here, I'm going to tell you something, man. Banks were closing. I mean, I was shocked. It was like, if you remember in the 80s, remember that savings and loan scandal we had in the United States? I mean, it was like that. I mean, people were lined up and they had lost their whole sa you know, life savings here. And I just haven't gotten that out of my mind. And, and so, you know, I don't really trust the banks here. So I lose out on that little $3.99. Uh, remitly fee, but I do it very seldom, as little as possible. But that's just something you're going to have to work out when you get over here. That's why I tell you, you know, when you first come over here for if it's two weeks or a month, go ahead and exchange all your money there. All right? Because what it's going to do, it's going to save you on ATM fees, remitly fees, and then, you know, if you got money, left over when you go back and you go to the airport and they buy back for for less than what you paid for it, than what they paid you for it. that's just the cost of coming to the philippines it, it would better it, it, it's best to do that than to keep running back to the atm keep going back to the remitly because those fees can add up pretty quick but a couple of my subscribers they asked me they said hey can you talk about the family dealing with your Filipino family over there, the Filipinas family over there. Will they accept you or do they see you as this cash cow? Well, we'll talk about the cash cow first because, okay, and I'm going to keep it on me because uh, every situation is different. But as poor as both of these families are, because I've dealt with two families over here. I've got two sons, one from my ex uh, that I spent two years with and then one with my soon-to-be ex-wife that I spent 10 years with and They're both very very poor, but they've never asked me for for not one peso Not one I mean really and uh, I Think that's a reputation that a lot of the Filipino families uh, don't deserve uh, but like I said, you know it just all depends on your situation. If you dealing with a woman that's always asking and her family has probably pushed her out there just to meet you, then you're probably going to get requests. But if you do get those kind of requests, it's best to stay in, top, stay in front of it like I did. See, I never even give them a chance to ask me. You know, when I first met uh, my son's mother, I mean, they live up in the mountains of Lanas. Now, they have a beautiful house now, and I have to take my hat off to her. When she did finally make it to the States, she's working two jobs. She built them a beautiful home up there. Took a, you know, maybe a year or two, but she did it. And, and a lot of Filipinas, they're good for that. But I remember going up there for the first time. I mean, it's way up in the mountains, guys. If you want to go and get an idea of what I'm talking about, I've got a video on my channel. It's called The Mountain. And I'm coming down the mountain. That's only halfway because that was coming from my son's school. 
I dropped his cell phone off. He won the cell phone last year for his birthday. So I bought him a cell phone and I met him at school. But that's only halfway to his house. Give you an idea. But before we got there, we stopped at the store and we bought chicken, fish, pork. You know, all the little fixings and stuff. Took it up there with us. She cooked. And you know, when I left, I gave her 2,500 pesos. And every time we would go there, I would even give her 2,000, 2,500 pesos, something like that. You know, because I was raised like that, you know, with compassion. Sometimes when I come home from school, man, ever since I was little, up until my mother passed away in 1993, man, we'd have strangers sleeping on the couch. We'd have whole families that my mother would bring in with no extra money, remember, no extra job or anything like that. You know, we were raised that way. And so, you know, I can see somebody struggling. They don't have to ask me, but even if I didn't do that, they never would have asked me for anything. Now, is it possible that the money you give her, she'll give to her family? Yeah, probably. Because like I said, you know, Filipinas, they're good for taking care of their family. You know, don't get mad at her for that. Don't try to stop her from doing that, especially when you get over to the States, you know, because it's unthinking of you to do that. You, you know the situation back here majority of my living don't do that but anyway uh she never asked me for anything the father never asked me for anything the brothers and sisters never asked me for anything as a matter of fact though they don't speak to you either you know they're so shy they're so bashful you're always i mean after 10 years if i go there today it'll be the same way they'll be giggling and laughing and bashful you know and it hurts me, it hurts me deep inside, man, that they haven't embraced me and said, you know, uh, you're part of the family. I'm still the foreigner, man, that's how they look at me. And it hurts, and even my wife's family, it's the same exact way, I do her mother the same way. Every time I go there, boom, 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 you know, here's three or 4,000 pesos, 5,000, whatever it is. Um, and I've been around them for 11 years, man, and they I'm still on the outside, and I can't explain it. My wife's been in the States for six years altogether, and when I first brought her over, I had a get-together, man, and from that very day, my wife came in June, I think June the 20th, 2014, so like June 21st or something like that, 2014, I had a get-together at the house to welcome her. Man, and my family wrapped their arms around her from that day all the way to this day. Even though we're not together, she's over there now as a member of the family. I mean, remember her birthday, Christmas, holidays, the whole nine yards, man. It's just how my family is, how we brought up. But here, it's different, man. And it, 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 it's really impersonal, you know, and it's really hurting for me. I'm an insurance agent, man. You know, my job is to get, into, get to know people. I mean, really get to know you so I can help you. But over here, man, getting to know them, you know, they keep you at a distance, man. I've been in some, just some awkward situations, man, where I'm the only one there. No one's trying to talk English. No one's trying to, you know, socialize with you. You know, they may say something like, um, eat kuya or something like that when it's time to eat or something like that. But other than that, Remember, I just came from there a couple of months ago. I was locked down there for six months when they had that ECQ. You couldn't travel. I was in the same house with this family for six months consecutively. And don't you know, man, they would not speak to me, man. They'd walk around me like I was some kind of stranger. I've been coming around there every single year, sometimes twice a year, for 10 years. Man, you talking about feeling awkward. You're talking about it's a strange feeling and it's so impersonal and um, the brother's in the army and he had come there one time with a couple of his army friends and he treated me like it was the first time he met me, man. It's hurting. You know, so I guess what the plan would be is, you know, because the first time you go there, of course, they're excited to meet you. They want to see you. Well, who's my sister dating or whatever? And you know, they'll ask you questions and stuff like that. But I guess the more you see them, you know, it's like, are oh, you just a typical foreigner, man? It's just my experience, man. And uh, it's just something that I hope you don't have to deal with, but I know you will because there's foreigners here, man, and I see it all the time. They just keep them at a distance, you know. 
uh, they talk around us, and we're never really fully brought into the family. Am I welcome there if I went there today and I needed a place to stay? Absolutely, but as far as being a part of the family and them remembering my birthday and, you know, and, and all that sort of thing, and hey, you know, let's go out and even though I don't drink, let's go out and get a drink or let's, you know, uh, let me show you around town or something like that. No, after 10 years, it's still that. So I hope that answers your question and I hope it's not for you. I hope the family that you have to deal with embraces you, but more than likely, and it's the same with uh, the people here. Yeah, they're welcoming and they're hospitable, but after a while, man, they start tolerating you and uh, they're not as welcoming as before, okay? they Like I said, they just keep you at a distance. Now, had I known the language, it would have been different because I would have forced myself into that situation, being the insurance uh, agent that I am. See, I know how to strike up a conversation. I know how to keep it going. But by me not being able to speak their language, only speaking English and expecting them to speak English back, it, 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 it put a chasm in between there. It was a real, I was at a real disadvantage. So, no. You're never fully accepted in. You're always going to be a foreigner. But as far as the cash cow is concerned, it just all depends on her upbringing and, and what family she comes from because the families I've dealt with over here, they never ask me for one peso. Okay, they're, they're real proud people and it's something I don't think you'll have to worry about. But if you meet one of these city girls probably, that's probably what's going to happen. They've probably pushed her out there to meet you anyway. And it's just a red flag, you know. Um, and I see why people will say, well, I don't want to move around her family and stuff like that because some families do ask. They've never asked me. And if you have a family member that asks you, put them to work. You know, just put them to work if you don't want to get out in front of that and, like, give the mother. See, I'll give the mother, but anybody else, the father, the sisters and brothers, no, I won't do it. So that's my take on it, man. That's my... 11 years of boots on the ground experience just what I'm seeing what I'm living and what I'm experiencing you know I'm not gonna sugarcoat it I'm still on the outside looking in it's still hurting it's very impersonal and I can't change people I'm just gonna continue to be myself you know I still send money every month for my sons and if they ever need anything I'm right here for them but I'm just a foreigner really man and it and you know if, if if you're like me, you know, I take it personal, man, you know, and, and, and it can hurt sometimes. So kind of get ready for that. But thanks for stopping by. I really appreciate it. I didn't really get into want to get any detail, just in a general way. He asked me, hey, you know, and the bottom line is you're probably always going to be on the outside looking in. You know, we've got a history with Filipinos. You know, you're not the first foreigner that comes over here. And maybe that's the reason why, you know, uh, a lot of people come before me. You know, uh, they've got a handbook on us. And maybe that's why they're so skeptical. But you're always going to be the foreigner, and they're always going to remind you of that. You know, oh, she's dating a foreigner. It's not Calvin. Oh, he's a foreigner. Okay? Or oh, he's the black American. You know, even though they've been knowing me for 10 years, you know. But I appreciate you stopping by. Thank you so much. If you're in America, you're already in the bed, unless you're on the West Coast. So I'm going to speak to your subconscious mind. When you wake up, I want you to go out. I want you to find somebody to help. When you go out to get your newspaper, you go out to get your early morning cup of coffee, and you see somebody in the street, I want you to buy them something to eat. I want you to give them a couple of dollars. Buy them something to drink. If you're in the Philippines, it's about 1.30 p.m., so you still have the rest of the day to go out here and find somebody to help. Because if I don't know anything else, I know this one thing for sure. When we help other people, we help ourselves. Take care, stay safe, stay COVID free, and I'll see you next time.